Sharif Farag, hematologist, uh, Indiana University Health. CAR T-cell therapy uh, is basically uh, engineering uh, T-cells, immune cells, uh, by introducing a uh, DNA that encodes for a specific receptor to recognize uh, cancer cells, either leukemia or lymphoma cells, as well as containing activating molecules that allow the uh, T cells to recognize specifically the cancer cells become activated and uh, uh, kill the uh, lymphoma or leukemic cells. These, this DNA is introduced actually into the uh, T cells through a viral vector and uh, then the cells are expanded uh, and uh, the, then they're, they're frozen and shipped back uh, uh, to the uh, center the patient for infusion. Once we identify a, a patient is, uh, is suitable for CAR T cell therapy, the first uh, thing is actually to collect uh, T cells. So we uh, apheresis uh, the patient, usually only a single apheresis uh, is required. Then the cells, depending on the manufacturer, are either uh, cryopreserved in-house and sent in a cryopreserved uh, fashion, uh, or we send the cells fresh. The manufacturing time for the uh, transfection and expansion of these CAR T cells uh, takes about uh, two to three weeks. Then the cells are shipped back to us when the patient is uh, is ready to to really to, to proceed forward. Uh, once we receive the uh, cells uh, in our lab, uh, the next thing will be to uh, admit the patient or treat them as an outpatient, depending on their circumstances, with uh, lymphodepleting chemotherapy. We uh, use fludarabine and cyclophosphamide. They receive that over three days, and then two days later, the uh, cells are then uh, thawed and infused into the patient. And then we usually admit them really for the infusion at this stage because uh, we have found that uh, some patients actually start to develop cytokine release syndrome uh, pretty early, within sometimes even hours of the infusion, although more typically it's a day or two later. Um, and uh, so we're able to monitor the patient closely. We recommend that uh, patients are referred early because the process of getting to CAR T cell therapy can be a little bit lengthy in these unstable patients. We want to see the patient early so that we can uh, decide on whether CAR T cell therapy is appropriate, uh, take into account the uh, need to collect the stem cells, the manufacturing process, which can take two to three weeks, and then try to expedite the infusion of uh, cells after their uh, lymphodepleting therapy as soon as possible. I guess the right time is, is, uh, is yet to be determined, but at the moment, the, uh, the, the, the two products that are FDA approved are approved for patients with a, a subtype of lymphoma, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, uh, that is uh, resistant uh, to chemotherapy, either initial uh, chemotherapy or where relapse has occurred and the patient is resistant to uh, chemotherapy. And uh, the uh, other product is approved for uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia in children and uh, young adults up to the age of uh, 25, again in the uh, refractory uh, setting, either primary refractory or relapsed and refractory uh, leukemia. Now, it is possible and probably likely that uh, as uh, uh, you know, the, the trials are done, that introduction of this therapy earlier in the phase of the disease may uh, give better outcomes, but you know, that remains to be seen. Diffuse large cell lymphoma, for example, in patients who may have had uh, induction chemotherapy and a small fraction of patients, uh, maybe about uh, a third or less, will not achieve a uh, complete remission. So these patients uh, would usually uh, receive uh, uh, some sort of salvage uh, chemotherapy. And if they're resistant to salvage chemotherapy, and usually we define that as uh, uh, less than a 50% reduction in the volume of uh, tumor cells, uh, then these patients would be eligible for CAR T cells, assuming, of course, that uh, they are you know, sufficiently fit to withstand uh, therapy. Similarly, in a relapsed patient with diffuse large cell lymphoma, uh, the, the, the usual uh, way we approach it is using some sort of salvage uh, chemotherapy to try and induce a response. Again, if they are resistant, uh, then these patients are good candidates for uh, CAR T cells as currently approved.
So I think uh, patients who have, uh, d uh, you know, leukemia that uh, is resistant to either uh, primary therapy or if they have relapsed uh, and they have resistant disease, these patients do not do well with what has been uh, used up to this point, which is allogeneic uh, stem cell transplantation. The outcomes of patients undergoing allogeneic stem cell transplantation in patients with active leukemia is, is generally poor. Uh, so that's where really CAR T cells have uh, offered a hope because a significant proportion of the patients with uh, th that resistant disease that uh, is not really suitable for allogeneic stem cell transplantation, uh, these patients now have a hope with uh, CAR T cell therapy. About uh, 80 to 90 percent of patients with uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia are achieving uh, a remission with CAR T cell therapy and uh, now with longer follow-up, uh, it appears that uh, uh, many of these remissions are quite durable. Well, I think the, the, the main direction uh, at the moment is to, to uh, broaden the use of CAR T cells in uh, other subtypes of lymphoma and uh, potentially also as we identify uh, uh, target molecules uh, against which we can, man you know, we can, we can uh, manufacture uh, CAR T cells to target these uh, uh, molecules in different kinds of cancers. Uh, that way we will be able to broaden the use of CAR T cells to a number of different malignancies. Uh, the, the, the closest probably is uh, the use of uh, BCMA uh, targeted CAR T cells. Uh, BCMA is expressed on multiple myeloma cells and uh, so we, there are currently ongoing clinical trials uh, in patients with uh, multiple myeloma. Uh, um, and we actually will have a, currently a clinical trial comparing CAR T cells to uh, chemotherapy in patients who have had at least two uh, prior regimens for treatment of their myeloma. So it's, it's, a, it's a comparative study to see if CAR T cells will perform better than what we currently have for this group of patients. Um, in other uh, subtypes of lymphoma, there are clinical trials that are looking to broaden the use of CAR T cells, not just in diffuse large cell lymphoma, but potentially in follicular lymphoma, uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, mantle cell lymphoma. These are just different other types of lymphoid uh, disorders. And then um, there's also a lot of research going in terms of uh, broadening that to target uh, breast cancer cells, head and neck cancer cells, cervical cancer cells, and the list goes on. I think it's important for referring doctors to, uh, to recognize the presence of CAR T cell therapies and uh, really even if in doubt about the exact indication, they should refer them early so that we can see them and make a decision uh, on whether they're appropriate uh, for therapy or not. And the patient's course can be quite dynamic. Uh, they may initially be considered for autologous stem cell transplantation and then uh, you know, uh, maybe their, their, their disease shifts in a way that they become more uh, eligible for CAR T cell therapy. So knowing that early on is important. Um, we have uh, a very strong infrastructure for, uh, at IU Health, uh, we have a strong infrastructure for uh, CAR T cell therapies. Uh, we are uh, approved by FACT for immune uh, uh, cellular therapy. Um, and uh, we have a really a comprehensive uh, program that uh, in, in both lymphoma, myeloma, and leukemia that uh, includes other therapies as well. So we're able to uh, provide a balanced uh, option for uh, patients with these diseases. E even though CAR T cell therapy is being done under the uh, stem cell or bone marrow transplant program, uh, really the uh, physicians in the bone marrow transplant program are also members of disease-specific groups, uh, lymphoma, myeloma, leukemia. So when a patient comes in potentially for CAR T cell therapy, they are also evaluated for whether it's appropriate, but also other options, other clinical trial options that may be available. And I think we have av available uh, even CAR T cell research protocols that uh, may be less accessible to uh, other centers. We're really approaching uh, all our referring doctors, letting them know of the availability of the therapy, um, what the timeline uh, for manufacture and treatment is. And then really, yes, we have the patient for 
usually a, a few weeks uh, to get them through the therapy and uh, deal with the post-therapy post uh, issues that uh, can arise. And then really the goal is to get them back to the uh, referring physician. Uh, we sometimes still have to monitor them because there are sort of longer term uh, problems, immune deficiency problems that occur. Uh, but uh, really the, the goal is to be able to co-manage these patients after their CAR T cell therapy with the referring oncologist. So we don't want to take their patient, we want to uh, uh, you know, serve the patient well uh, and co-manage these patients as required.